some images to put to the names. Mike, Bridgend. Yeah, looking at the uh, the back three first. Obviously, the Craig Wall or the play ten last year for Bridgend on the left wing surprise, but look out for Matt James is a really improving player. We've talked about the centres; they got everything in there. British Lions, the Caps. But the, this is interesting for me. This new explosive and exciting combination of halfbacks, Mannix and Martins. I think they've made a big difference to Bridgend this year. Up front, many questions to be answered about the collective might of Bridgend. Nathan Budget, the experienced international player in their back row. Andy Moore recruited, Daniel Jones in the second row, and much interest in the performance of Gareth Williams, tipped by many to be the next Welsh hooker. Phil Booth, of course, recruited from Flanetley. I think we look at the uh, the Ponapri backs now, and of course, Brett Davy there. He won't be kicking tonight because of Jenkins in the team. Nuttall has cemented his position on the left wing. Here's this partnership. This is Mo and these two against the Gem boys. Now, the half-backs, you put out uh, Sweeney and John, and you can put in Jenkins and Faber. That's not a bad pair of backup half-backs, that, is it? Neil Jenkins isn't the only person to return to Sardis Road. Geraint Lewis has returned there from Swansea. The Chief, Dale McIntosh, into the second row. Probably not his favourite position. But type 5 work, well, it may be his role from now on. And a mighty impressive front row. Gethin Jenkins, again, very much rated as a future international player to last a decade so there it is mike i think it's i think it's intriguing i think there's everything to play for i think we're talking about two clubs in good early season form. in good form and they've got perfect conditions here i mean the uh, back lines are brimming with talent i just hope we we get the sort of uh, occasion and we get the rugby that this deserves look that's i mean lately samuel has made an appeal for the uh, for the Bajen crowd to turn up and they certainly are tonight in their numbers and i think you can see that you can attract the crowds to Bridgend if the right fixtures are on you, and this one is certainly uh, one to savour. Glorious evening here. I bet it's warm in that changing room. The pitch is in great nick. Blue skies, lush green field, red, white and black coming out to meet blue and white. Some clash in prospect. Now let's join our commentary team. Jonathan has scampered away to sit alongside Gareth Charles. Yeah, thanks, Ed. We saw those scenes of the crowds there, Jonathan, and that's the one thing they want down here in Bridgend. They've got a brand new stand over there. Pont, you've got their supporters coming down. They want the home crowd shouting as well. Well, you know, if you to get people into the gates, uh, you've got, you want results, and they've started extremely well. And if they can keep the momentum going, I'm sure that the, you know the the crowds will uh, will come in. And also, Ponty always have got a good uh, travelling support, so it should be you know a good atmosphere tonight, and uh, hopefully a, an excellent game. So three captains of Pontypridd along the way then, Neil Jenkins, Dale McIntosh and first of all the present captain Levin Davis and leading out for Jen, their captain Gareth Thomas. He surprised a lot of people, or Alan Lewis has surprised a lot of people, Jonathan, in picking Gareth Thomas as captain, but we've seen him a couple of times this year. He leads by example, he really gets stuck in. And also, you know, if you, um, if you do give you know, uh, him uh, the captaincy, it gives him responsibility and uh, sometimes that brings the best out of players, very well disciplined, you know, he maybe a little bit of a reputation off the field, you know, with, uh, with the Welsh squad, but I think he is one of the best setters in Wales and uh, he, he should be in that Welsh side somewhere. He's a very talented player, very fit player and strong and I think he will push in that Welsh side this year. It'll be interesting, you've got for quality centres, you know, the O'Brien, Sonny Parker, and David James and Gareth Thomas. So, you know, any two of these could make it into the Welsh side this year. One of Scotland's leading referees, Ian Ramage, the man in charge this evening. And one of the men of the moment, Richard Parks. Great game against Newport last Saturday evening. We're hoping we can have a great game on a Friday night. Perfect conditions, the sun just setting, not too much of a breeze, and conditions underfoot as well, tremendous. So no excuses, as they may have been as at St. Helens last week for any mishandling. The players couldn't ask for a better platform, it's now down to them. And the old man in action straight away, though not entirely pleased with his first kick for touch. No, maybe a bit... Uh a bit flat-footed there, he didn't take a rush step into it, but still had good uh, good distance. But 
Jinx is never happy, is he? You know, he's a perfectionist. Well, line out is the Gems' first option, and Ian Ramage just making sure the gap is there between the two sets of forwards. Try the funny one to the front to Cirilo Martens. Can't be just getting there in time. Faber spoons it out rather to Neil Jenkins, but he leans back on that kick. Plenty of distance on it, but still infield. And Matt James just setting himself up. Matt James has made a very good impression indeed since coming down from Ebbovale. Yeah, he played well for Ebbovale last year and um, you know this is the, the knock on. Very difficult when the scrum half takes the ball into a hooker. It's a bit of a mismatch and he loses the ball in contact. Yeah, great advantage. Great advantage. have the advantage if they can get the ball out. David to Jenkins. And it's just gone up between the two sets of forwards. The referee was telling, was telling Bridgen to leave it anyway. Doesn't look as though they listened to those words. There's a couple of uh, couple of good right hooks in there, actually. Anything put for it? Two second row, one all. Second row and wing forward, I think it was. Sorry? Second, second row blue, wing forward red. Yeah. We all piled in yeah. with the two of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Two captains, please. Well, the touch judge, not absolutely clear on it. Neither was Ian Ramage. Yes. But Daniel Jones was obviously involved. Let's see, here's the effects of it. And uh, that left eye, in fact, is Richard Bryan, yeah. the number eight, who's involved. Your guy's pulling down. And these two started it. And. Well, I think they better get the seconds on. Yeah, a bit of clatter there. It's been a good strike. Here we go. There's the first ring of punch. And in juice it away. Oh, and everyone piles in. It's very difficult to say, you know, who threw what there from that angle, but uh, certainly, they know George got caught, didn't he? Yeah, Richard Bryan as well. So, one or two went in on both sides, and they need to just settle down. And I think Ian Ramage will need all the help he can get from Howard Wilson and Hill Watkins, his two touch judges this evening. He's got to go off, hasn't he? I think Daniel Jones, we saw he was bleeding from the left cheek. There's no way, you know, he can stay on with the blood, but he's just got to go off. And the quicker he gets off, the quicker he can get back on. Sean Van Rensburg comes on as a temporary replacement, Bloodbin, while Richard Bryan possibly gets a couple of stitches in that left cheek of his. And he'll want to get back on as soon as possible. It's his first game of the season. Pulled a hamstring against Bath pre-season. He's only played four minutes so far. The take by Robert Sidoli. And here comes the Ponty drive. Well marshaled by the Gen to start with. But it's still in control. They break in the other direction and then go to ground. Jenkins, Bryant, Brett Davy offering the inside track. And again, the referee penalising Bridgend, grabbing after the scrum half over the top. Yeah, just doing enough to slow the ball down, infringing with Gareth Barber. You know what that does then? It just slows the ball and just gives you that split second to uh, organise your defence and this is a very confident move by Ponnaby to go for the try. This Beaver goes in, puts the, the stud in, there he is, Ren, Sean Van Rensburg just grabs him. Very interesting from Ponnaby, they go for five rather than three, snipped back by Sidoli. Mevin Davis is the one with the ball in his grasp, good drive back from Bridgen. And it's a turnover ball as well. Excellent defence from the home team. Yeah, should they have gone for the three points? I think early on in the game, maybe they should have secured the three points. A good response there by, uh, by the Bajent forwards. 
pressure coming on John Teal there and that scrum went down in a heap well unfortunately for those people outside they've missed the first six minutes or so and they're gonna be there a while by the look of it the drive from Ponty Gend defending near their own try line but they have managed to keep their grasp on the ball and Conti encroaching and now Bridgen can clear at leisure that will be worrying for Bridgen there's a big big push on with the punt to feet forward but Van Rensburg did exceptionally well to make something out of that <laughs> Matt James again doing the clearance work from that side and Sean Van Rensburg makes his presence felt early on well there's the people queuing after getting in that's a, that's a shame that uh, you know, they're missing this game we need to get a few more people on the gates the gen have been looking for a big crowd all season they've got one and a lot of Ponty jerseys out amongst those supporters as well Jenkins prepares for the kick. We can go down pitch side to Stewart. Yeah, thanks very much, Gareth. Just a quick update on that Richard Bryan injury. He's, he's paid a bit of a price for not keeping his head down in that skirmish. They are more concerned about the swelling rather than any cut, but they've had the ice on it, and as I speak, he's making his way to the touchline, hoping to rejoin. He'll wait until the kick is over. Brett Davy has been Pontefree's kicker so far this season a kick of just under 38 meters the usual concentration the usual preparation not the usual result Neil Jenkins draws it across there's a, a bad miss by, uh, by Neil Standard usually he's straight in the middle of exceptionally close and he did pull that Neil Jenkins' first kick back in Ponty Colours doesn't result in the customary three points. Richard Ryan back on the field. There we are. Stitched up, bit of as, and wants to get on with it. Well, I thought he was doing no they were very similar. Geraint Lewis sets it up. Jenkins. McIntosh offers himself as a runner. Good take by Mannix. He's a brave outside half, but that's excellent ball. Recycled by Pontypriv. Fine tackling in midfield for Parker and Brian both do well. Nuttall didn't go forward. It looks as though the referee's just playing advantage. Indeed it did. As Nuttall tried to get it back in field, just inched forward. But that midfield battle is already developing. Yeah, it's a good cover tackle by uh, Celia Martin, Spushtum Arfley. But offloading in the tackle on the feedback line. Matt James has stepped up as a kicker. Safe one, but quickly taken by Brett Davy. That's a monster of a kick. Really got some height on that. Oh, well taken by Phil Booth. Very well taken indeed by the loose head. It's there for Bridgen to use. Mannix ships it out rather. And Craig Warlow has to take it on the bounce. And it's obvious that Simon Mannix doesn't fancy himself as a as a touch kicker, but Craig Warlow is well used to that job. Well, you know, from from this, this is the play from Ponapree. Brian, first of all, bang, takes a tackle, inside ball, good support by Brian, and then good hands again. But like Celo Martins goes for the ball, dislodges it, scrum Bridgen. From from uh, Davies up and under, loose play, there was numbers on the left for Bajend and there was a poor pass by Simon Mannix, there's an opportunity for an overlap on the left and I think that's what we have been missing in Welsh rugby, there's been plenty of counter-attack play but when they're chasing the game, then is it, it is an opportunity, then they have to go for it. Jenkins, straight out to midfield to 
I think that's all they've got across there. Sonny Parker on the wing that time. The kick was straight down the throat of Matt James. Ryan Clark handled it. Nick Kelly was there for Conti. And it had gone forward. Down there from the north by Blue. Yep. Matt James has looked secure under the high ball. And he's kicked well out of hand as well. Here we go. There's the overlap. Look, they've got numbers. Look, they've got one, two, three, four, five. With plenty of space for him there, and just the pass was poor. You know, an opportunity missed there by Bajen. Quite the castle in the distance. And the sun just setting. And it won't be long before the lights will be on at the brewery field. Let's drive straight, not upwards, please. Crouch and hold. Wait, wait, crouch and hold. Slight advantage for Pontefried as far as the weight goes in the scrum. And Jenkins is coming back against the direction the ball is going. And again, Matt James positions himself perfectly. He loses every centimetre of the 22 and puts in a lovely kick. Jenkins won't be happy with his uh, kicking so far. You know, it'll take a bit of uh, time to get used to, you know, bar with his scrum, uh, scrum half here, but, but, you know, it's uh, this guy's have been exceptionally well, defensively strong, and they're utilising, you know, in the kicking positions. Both teams just sizing each other up in the opening stages. Looking for our first points with a dozen minutes played. Good battle that time between... Andy Moore and Robert Sidoli and the captain Mevin Davis is there to tidy up for Pontypridd. McIntosh takes it on into Daniel Jones. Faber had to have a look, found Brett Davey. And again, the Gen defence is up very quickly indeed and another fine take by Matt James. And a good little deck kick as well. Which Davey can't gather, so the Gen will come out of it with a scrum. A bit of enterprise as well as safety. From the Bajen fullback, Matt James. Yeah, good play first of all by Mavin Davis. Pressure put on by Andy Moore in the line out. A good feeling up, but good play again by Matt James. Very confident, you know, confident in his fullback play. We saw him play for the A team last year, Jonathan, and what we've seen a couple of times so far this year, he could well be in the reckoning again. And well, there's no only pressure in Kevin Morgan at the moment, so. You know, he's up there. Daniel Jones is the one who sets it up and Bridgen with ball in hand going forward and done that too many times they've been spent a lot of time defending good clean catch by Gareth Wyatt and he's up and away spots a big gap downfield as well and there's only one man back there for Bridgen almost goes without saying that one was over the touchline but quickly taken by Geraint Lewis Parker, uh, McIntosh rather the angled kick from Brett Davey, but it was angled towards touch. Had he kept that one in field? That would have been interesting, because Simon Mannix's legs, well, they're not the fastest these days, and Matthew Mutt, was pretty quick on the left wing. Yeah, maybe, the, you know, he's getting loose of the ball in quickly, and the, and the line was a bit flat, so they didn't get any momentum. And Simon Mannix has been brought in, maybe not for his legs, just for his uh, controlling uh, ability. Highlights this Sunday evening, just after six o'clock. Eddie and Jonathan back in with us to chew the fact over all the happenings of the weekend. And remember, the website is all your address as well for all your thoughts, whether they be on Butler's bets or anything happening within any of the weekend's games. Well, it's 15 minutes uh, gone. There's no pattern of the game yet. You know, you can't see what you know, Ponapri they're trying to do, maybe they're trying to keep it a little bit in, you know, in the forwards, you know, playing for field position, but Bridgen haven't really got the ball yet to, to show what they're trying to do, so, you know, hopefully in the next uh, 10 minutes we'll see some patterns uh, coming from this game. There is the Chief, Dale McIntosh, front of the Ponapri line out this evening, looking after Daniel Jones, but Jones got down well to that one. Didn't get the five metres it needed, though. Just got that half a yard too far forward in the end. Yeah, you know, 
But then, bad error. He won't be happy with that. Looking to run a big clout from Gary Thomas on John Bryant. Uh, Brett Davy having to hurry the kick again and the gender really putting pressure on Potter Field's kickers. Yeah, it's a uh, poor, poor play, I think. It's Gareth Aber at the moment, he won't be happy. Gareth Aber isn't having quality ball, he's got to clean out because, you know, the the passing from 9 to 10 is a bit labour at the moment because the ball isn't clean. And it's a superbly taken line out by Robert Sidoli. Got in ahead of Andy Moore. Monty looking to walk it forward. Faber probing the blind side. It was Geraint Lewis he had there. Held on to it. And the support arrives from the pocket field forwards. Lewis drives on just over the 10 meter line and getting a few more yards but then losing possession at the crucial moment taken by Nathan Budget and that's allowed Craig Warlow just to drop back into his 22 and that hard work from Pontefreve is all in vain still no points early thoughts my call yeah it's very very typical of what we've seen so far this season and they're very scrappy there's no pattern to the game and I'm surprised at Ponifree, they kicked a lot of ball away and Matt James is dealing with it easily at the moment. I think if Ponifree keep the ball in hand, you know, they may get something maybe more creative. Those are the new hospitality boxes at the Brewery Field. That's the best populated they've been so far this season. Again, it is only their second home game. The other one was against the Borders and they're not going to bring a lot of travelling support. Pocketfried looking to this driving line out. That's their main way forward so far, as long as Gareth Faber doesn't get scragged like that, but at least they have had a couple of penalties from it. Yeah, number four, Daniel Jones. It is Daniel Jones this time, not like the last time I... I I said, there's a cloud coming in, they haven't, actually, they haven't missed anything to be honest, look at them, I think, uh, hope they've had a bit of a discount, but anyway, this is where they could be dangerous, he's now going to give field position away, and this is where Ponty will try and utilise their forward, and get that driving line going on, so, you know, they can't afford to give penalties away in these areas. i got a feeling as well, if that happens again, then there'll be a yellow card for it, Ian Ramage had a word there with Daniel Jones, but, Neil Jenkins' kick doesn't find touch, and that, is a mistake you don't see often from the great man. Wyatt looks to work the angle behind Richard Musto, and that's a fine kick. And looking at that touch flag, though, the, bre the breeze, such as it is, favouring Bridgman in this first half. Yeah, you know, he's uh, very difficult, but I don't think there is hardly any wind. Good awareness, good vision from, uh, from Wyatt, and just puts it in behind the Bridgend uh, defence and again. It has been very quiet. I think uh, Bridgen have done well in stopping Geraint Lewis coming into the play. Uh, but they want him to get the ball. That's another lineup gone against Bridgen's throw and gives Pontefree an even bigger share of the possession. Lewis took that one well and he burst through the tackle as well. That's the first time Ponty really got some pace on in the 22. Bryant back to Jenkins again to Parker. Parker takes the tackle from David James. It's been pinched by Bridgen. They've won the ball on the floor. It is a free ball. And that's a turnover. But Bridgen have forwards out there. They can't really kick the catch, but it's a missed tackle on Garrett Williams, the hooker. Oh, great burst by the hooker as well. And manages to get the offload in. So Bridgen from being under pressure under their own try line, making up the halfway. But unluckily for them, they're penalised. But uh, Bridgen combining defence and superb attack from the forwards. Yeah, good pitch and great play by Gareth Williams. What he did, he did the dummy kick. Everyone expecting him to clear his lines. Dummy kick and then acceleration. Watch this now. Bang. Up, dummy kick. Pulls it in. Pushes Parks off. And he just has a crack. He gets, just nearly gets caught by Matt Davy. Good play by, supported by Booth. But he is holding on to the ball. Richard Parks did well to get back there. Good decision. Gareth Williams. There's a seven specialist. He was up in Manchester in the Commonwealth Games, and we can see why he was motoring. 
And it was that turnover ball that was crucial for Pontypridd. They realised how difficult the Bridgend midfield is to break down. Mannix is marshalling it in Martens on the inside. Then they got the experienced David James and Gareth Thomas there. They tried a couple of loop arounds, but then they lost the ball. A second attempt for Neil Jenkins. It's from a greater distance. It's more or less straight in front. Keeps his head down, follows through well. And those are the first points back in Pontypridd colours for the prodigal son. Yeah, it's lovely kick. They just deserve it, I think. You know, they have done a little bit, you know, more than Bajan. Dummy kick, fends Parks, and he's away. But look at Parks, he's tracking, he's tracking, he's tracking. Booth does a tackle, bang, he's on his feet, going for the ball. And that's why they had the penalty. Parks was cleared out, but Booth is holding on. Well, midway through the first half, the first, first points come. And how often have we said the first points put on the board by Neil Jenkins? Just about reaches touch, but Martin just straight there. That's Ryan, and that's the other one. Ryan with a tee, with a tackle on Craig Warlow. Here's Bridgen ball. Ryan again in the action. Getting Jenkins with a tackle, and then McKelly kind of shoving back. And there's the turnover now for Pondepied. Here comes Baber. McIntosh in midfield. It was all very, very crowded. Didn't force the 50 50 pass. Baber keeps them going forward. Awkward bounce away from Matt James. He shows he's got two feet he can work off. Yeah, he's making it look easy, James, because his positional play is very, very good. Sidoli has had a fair share of those Pontefield lines out. Got another one as well. No, he hasn't actually, because he climbed on Nathan Bridget in winning it. It's a clever player. You think he's going to lose it? Whoop! Get that down. <laughs> Hand on the shoulder. The referee spotted it, but. You know, it's nice to see that sometimes because he is a young player and, you know, it's nice to see him the old experienced head trying to get away with it because he knew he wasn't going to win it. A word of apology from Sidoli. He gave it his best shot. Sidoli has won two caps in South Africa, both as replacement for Gareth Ellen. Of his, of his top distance, so he had to strike this well. Over 50 metres. Oh, it's a lovely kick, but is it going to drop short? And indeed, and just goes to the left, but he was effortless. The timing was good from Craig Wallow, but they didn't quite have the distance. Well, can't agree, they're up in arms because Brett Davy said he didn't touch it down. Let's see if he does put it down because sometimes a couple of years ago he was not putting the ball down when he crossed the try line. This might be a new trend now and he started it. Oh, oh Davy. We'll have a look at that when we get the chance when there's a break in play, but it continues Run. with Richard Musto, average end winger, Martens to Mannix. Looks inside, then feeds outside of David James. Both Run. Bryant. And Jenkins were waiting for him. But the Gent had numbers going left. Weren't allowed to get the ball out. Hands on it. The Gent penalty. Here's the ball. Just misses the right hand up. Right. There's uh, Davy there. Hang on. Hang on. I think he touched it on the other side of the trail line, didn't he? That's, That's exactly clever. Good. That's clever. And this lines were near on the right hand side post. Should have seen that. And to be fair to him, I think he did. I think the touch judge did say play on, but the referee had already blown by then. Very, very clever, that. Never see that done before in my life, to be honest. 
Uh, upstairs for thinking, eh, Brett? And I've tried a few tricks in my time, <laughs> and a lot of people I've played with have. I haven't seen that one. Not even Mark Rings did that one. Craig Wallow, the only Welshman in the top six point scorers in the Celtic League after the first two weekends. It's that lazy, laid-back kick of his that time, measured absolutely perfectly. The Germans first points, and with 26 minutes played, it's three points all. Yeah, certainly striking the ball well. That was a lovely, lovely kick. No, three all. Stevens and one out of two each for the two kickers but both teams will know that they are quality kickers so they'll have to keep their transgressions penalties down to a minimum Matt James in the field that time Brett Davy straight away to Gerard Lewis Olitika with the tackle again slightly slow ball Nothing Neil Jenkins can do about it. He had two men right up on him straight away. And it's not quality ball. Even though they're getting a lot of possession, it's not quality ball that Pontypri are getting from those rucks and balls. No, you know, we're not having quick ball. No, we're not. Neither packs are generated quick ball for their, you know, for their backs to run onto it. And it does give Neil Jenkins and Mannix, you know, a difficult decision to make. Do they shovel it on or do they, you know, try and look for the, for the yardage? And it is very very slow Simon Mannix formerly of Sale and Gloucester New Zealand international McIntosh with a take no way Ponte was going to drive that and he came crashing back down to earth and again it's slow slow ball to give the gem every chance to get up on him had to go the long way round and kick possession away in the end Think about the count there, that's some boot from Matt James. Well read by Brett Davey, very well read. He was back there, because that one over his head, he was in touch in the 22. And Davey does what James did earlier, except that Molotika was there to cover. Yeah, great take of Matt Davey. But again, they're looking for the option. It's the two full-backs we've seen most in action this evening so far. Yeah, they, but they are taking the easy option, aren't they? There's no... The wings aren't getting back to help the full-backs to look for the counter-attack. Break up, please! Yes, we just wait. Coach in Jenkins trying to work on John Teal. And again, Richard Bryan, the number eight. Has to work at the back of that scrum. Martens to Mannix. Gareth Thomas, the long pass out to Matt James. The wall over, space there. The cross comes Wyatt. Good, solid tackle, but well laid back as well. Keeping Bridgen going forward. Good, sensible play by Craig Wallow. Martens to Budget. Big hit on him by Geraint Lewis and Richard Parks. Lovely passing from Bridgen. Another big hit, Mevin Davis. A bending Richard Mesto, that was a massive hit from the Ponte captain. Good play by Vigen, trying to work the short side, but superb cover tackle, absolutely crunching. Watch this, there's the outside ball, there's the inside ball, and he was in really, bang! Richard Mesto was in there, but a superb try-saving tackle by Mervyn Davis, absolutely nailed him. Lovely offloading from the Vigen players. So I'm going to try in that corner against Borders in similar fashion last weekend. Get rid of it before the tackle comes in. But boy, did that last tackle come in from Evan Davis. I think that is the, the closest, as, you know, we've, got, we've uh, seen to a, a try because if Mevin hadn't made that tackle, Musto was in. Good interplay there by Bajen. Bang. Clear line, superb tackle. Jen's line, budget, taps it back, Martens, Mannix, Dummies back inside, and again, the missed tackle first up. 
Harry James holds on to the ball. Forwards do the necessary. Mannix. That's to the area where Conte Pree have got a lot of defenders. That's Conte's 22. Martens wants runners coming off him. Lovely, good, quick pass from Mannix. Gareth Thomas and Gareth Williams combining well. Jen going through the phases. Wallow looks for the drop goal attempt. Drifts wide. Referee was playing advantage anyway. Penalty straight in front. So if Wallow couldn't do it with the drop goal, he will with the penalty. Yeah. Richard Parks. You know, he's the man who's been penalised. But, you know, it's very difficult to, s to say why they were penalised because the ball was so slow coming back. You don't really need to encroach when the ball is so slow, got it? There's the website address. There's Mervyn Davis just questions the managers. Here we are. Here's the, here's the drop goal. But I think the infringement was uh, a couple of rocks earlier. Craig Wallow, no problems at all from straight in front. And the Gen going into the final 10 minutes of the first half. Take the lead at six points to three. Yeah, clawed their way back into it. Just needs a spark though. No, needs a spark, someone to do something just to, to brighten the match up. Richard Ryan just Fred. gives an extra meter and allows an extra second of time. And Matt James not going for touch, just going for distance, pushing Conti back there, letting them bring the ball up. And the Gens play this season has been heavily dependent on the opposition having the ball, and that's exactly what they're doing again tonight. Ethan Jenkins was the one who eventually okay, took it, it, nobody else seemed particularly interested. Mannix is really flying up on the outside, cutting Neil Jenkins' outside path, so John Bryant has to take that one up. Jenkins, Davy, Parker, advantage to Pontepree, there's an offside against David James, but they still have the possession for the moment. Not anymore. Brett Davy wanted to take it quickly. And Bajen weren't back the necessary 10 metres, so the kick will be 10 metres further forward. Why would the 10 years for your player interfering with the ball when he was taking a quick tap? I think he knows no. why he's at 10 yards, no? No question about that answer, is it? It should be all square after this one. Showed his experience, just checking exactly what was wrong, not just for the penalty, but why he was 10 metres further on. Doesn't matter how easy they are, and Jenkins thinks of them all the same. He is successful, so Pontefried strike back immediately. And it's back at six points all. So half dozen minutes of the first half remaining. Still the game not really getting a pattern to it. No, it's still, you know, the defence, again, they're on top. They've got to you know, bring some creativity and just then break defences down. There's different angles of running, you know, dummy runners. There's nothing happening so far and it's a very, you know, very slow game. Neil Jenkins making absolutely sure by landing that one on top of the new stand. We can go down fish side again. Back to it. Thanks very much, Garth. Well, Dennis, uh, we've had a dust up. We've had some uh, some softening up, but no clear ascendancy. No, no, at the moment, I would say that uh, Ponty forwards are slightly on top, but uh, Bajenda defended very well. Ponty's kicking game is not as they would like at the moment. 
and Bajenda got three good kickers out of hand in uh, 10, 11 and 15 and Matthew was shunting it back at 15 a long way so they're having to work very hard at the moment for anything that they're getting. What message would you be sending on to the Ponty backs? Well, they, they are just kicking a little bit away but perhaps that's what they want to do is make Bajenda defend in their own half all the time and the kicking game is not quite right at the moment. There's only one doing the kicking for them where Bajenda got three. Thanks, Dennis. Lovely ball from Andy Moore, chance for Bridgen to run and work it amongst the backs. Oh, big hit on Matt James. There's some crunching tackles going in there. And there's John Bryant to that one. And it's Bridgen in possession through Nathan Budget up to the front of three of 22. Mannix back inside is a good pass. The gap was there for David James and he's strong enough to shrug off the first tackle. 10 metres only from the try line, Gareth Thomas. And again, Ponty's first up tackling isn't that sure. Mannix, the gen could have numbers here, the little rubber kick through wasn't what it needed. It needed ball in hand. And that's that Ponty for you off the hook. Jen. It was a superb opportunity there, Gareth. Uh, Gareth. What happened was when Gareth Jen, uh, Thomas went in on his own, the last but one defender on the Pontypridd's right-hand side was Mavin Davis. You know, his back's against him. He's got to try and get the ball out to attack the back on the forward. They've got to look up and see who's in that defensive line. And Mavin Davis was caught inside the winger on the right-hand side. Didn't attack, didn't see the opportunity. Then make the change. And Mama Molichika, who's been forced into open side duty this evening, has gone off. And they've got a genuine open side on now, and Jamie Ringer, and there he is, straight in on that tackle, wearing 22, getting the ball back for Bridgen. McIntosh up very quickly on Phil Booth in midfield. David James. Forced his way up to the 10-metre line, Matt Hens in there. And Bridgen, they're going through the phase as well. Thomas held by John Bryant, but it should be Bridgen ball once again. There's only Richard Musto to the right, so they'll have to go left. That's the way they are going. But not the best of passes. He's behind Matt James. He'll check back inside, and it all comes to absolutely nothing in the end. Here we go. Here's the opportunity. Look, ball, he goes in there. Bang. There's Mevin Davis just coming to shot on the right hand side, you see? And now we shuffle him back out. They should have attacked him. There was numbers on the, the left-hand side, but the wrong option by Gareth Thomas. You've got to attack a front row forward when he's in the line. Chances have been few and far between in this first half. Will that then prove costly for Bridgen? Half chance, though it was. Hang on and over his man. Mannix with a kick in the end of that. Too often this evening. And Gareth Wyatt willing it over the try line, it wouldn't go. And he's the one who has to kick it out of play. And nonchalantly done. Yeah, very good kick. Gareth's played full back, and out at half this time, so very confident kicker. We haven't seen the running skills of Gareth Wyatt so far this evening. One lovely cross kick. And then fine pressure relieving kick from his own try line Andy Moore with a line out ball Norton knocked on says the referee so Celilo Martens has a chance to have a little dart in the final minute of the first half little bit of injury time great one-handed pass from Phil Booth under pressure but then the ball was spilled forward yeah. again scrappy play good defensive work Duncan Bell goes in, Budget, good tackle once again, just knocks it on there in a tackle, superb tackle. I think it was Nick Kelly who made the tackle. So approaching the end of normal time. Monty supporters try and get a bit of spirit there. Baber is away and clear. Great work by Baber. Wyatt comes in on the inside track. Tremendous tack on him by Martens, but it's still on. Davy was there. So was Parks and Mevin Davis. Jenkins, Bryant, Parker, 
superb tackle by David James, but it's still Pontypridd in possession. Brian, for the second time, they're on the Gens 22, but now the Gen have reformed in defence, and it's bad ball for Gareth Faber, and hacked through, and again, the Gens defence somehow holds firm, but what a break initially by Faber. Yeah, lovely break, takes budget on the outside, pace, Wyatt well, tries to come on the inside, but he's well marshalled by Silo Martins. But the opportunity is still alive. Look, his ball, and it goes. Good play, bang. Ball goes out again. Jinx. This is where they've got to straighten up. They've got an overlap, three to two. Great tackle, David James, but there was an opportunity there for the three on two if he'd have got his pass away, Parker. Indeed, he needed the quick hands, but David James flew up on Sonny Parker, realised the danger was there. Watch, he knows what he's doing. Budget is caught a bit flat footed on the blind side. And it's Tada really. Wyatt goes in, but look at that tackle. Martins and Wallow does well to go back there. But look at this good play. Back row. It was eight, six, then seven. Good play. I think it needed Salilo Martins because I think Wyatt had just picked up the angle to shrug off Craig Wallow, but Martins, we all know he's some tackler. Yes. You know, there is a lot of teams for the gen this year, a lot more than last year. Last ditch tackles. Parker, straight up the middle. Geraint Lewis, man and ball with Jamie Ringer on him, but it's kept alive. Jenkins has gone back for the drop goal. Lines up a long range effort, but he's gone underneath it. Not going to threaten the post. Matt James is back there. His clearance. Is it beauty once again? And is the final clearance of the first half. Matthew James has certainly performed well for Bridget. But both sides have been slightly disappointing. It's been a defence orientated game and just two penalties apiece. Yeah, I think, um, you know, two choice goal opportunities by Bridget, the clear ones. But, uh, you know, super good tackles and maybe a, a wrong decision. And then Barber. Faber's tack, you know, his break right towards the end, and something could have come of that, but it's it's been very strappy, and defence again is the winner, unfortunately, in the first half. Very tight, no tries, just two kicks, and those going to Neil Jenkins and Craig Wallow at half-time. It's for Gen 6, Pontypridd 6. Much earlier, the last time I, I saw you, Baz, you were in full biker gear down in the Mumbles front. i got to say, you scrub up very nicely as Pontypridd's... Uh, new team manager are you happy with the way things gone yeah it's very tough game as you know Stu. um really good cent center battle going on at the moment i think johnny bryant just put a big hit on on one of the i think it was alfie i'm not sure but um yeah really tight defenses at the moment and uh, it's going to take something special i think to break it down at the moment upon the peter up plenty of chances i think because your, your lads up front are doing a good job they're providing good possession yeah it, I think it might get a bit more loose second half and he might make a, a, some inter, introduce some new players from the bench. You know, that could make a difference later on in the game. Do you think it's a fight that we can see them take on more if they are winning that possession? Uh, the old cliche is one up front. I'm not sure. I think Bridget are uh, uh, marshalling uh, the rucks very well at the moment. It's going to take something a little bit wider to break it down. And um, I don't know. I hope Jinx, he just got the kicking boots on at the moment. That, that just seems to be the way it's going to be. Yeah, well, if you're going to get it wide, there's no better man in the business. Uh, Jinx can spin them out as well as anyone. Let me ask you about his impact, the, the return of, of, of the king to Ponty. What, what, sort of, what effect has it had in the club? Well, obviously, he lifted the old squad as soon as we knew that he'd signed. And um, he's, he's just a brilliant guy all around. Everybody knows that in Wales. And uh, he fetches the youngsters on. He's got plenty of time for, for everybody at the club, you know. Yeah, there's a few old faces back. Thanks for talking to us, Baz. Okay, it's great. Pontypridd in the change room. Adam Lewis. Well, it's not quite Lynn Jones, but it's it's a rant. And I think he has every reason to be um, in such form, Mike. Yeah, I, I think he will have seen some signs there at the end of this this first half that Bridgen was starting to get a bit of continuity. Like Gareth Thomas and sort of uh, David got through, broke through. But, you know, I mean, they were offloading well in the tackle, and there's one good example of it. It looked like Musto was away, but it was a, it was a lovely hit from, from Evan Davis, who well, probably saved the try. Well, it was, and we talk about, Nigel Bazzani, we talk about big defences, which you think of systems. This wasn't systems, this was just a bit of individual brilliance. Absolutely. Okay. We almost <laughs> cut him in half, didn't he? But it was, uh, I think, you know, that's been the feature of rugby. I think it is, it is a lot easier 
to defend and to show your commitment in defence, and it is to show the creativity and the breakdown defence. It's where all credit to Mervyn, that was a great tackle. Well, I've got to say though, Mike, you know, it's, we, Nigel Bazzani made it seem as if it was a surprise that the tackling would be good in such a game as this. But I think you should take it for granted that the defence is going to be good. What the disappointing thing is that, you know, nobody's managed to think of a way through watch such this, solid defence. Watch this tackle here from David James. This is absolutely superb. He spots the danger there because he sees the three on two and he really commits himself to the tackle. I mean, sometimes in that situation, you'll see a centre hang back and go for the drift. He didn't. He went into parks and he nailed him. And that was a great tackle. Yeah, but if, if David James can see it, if he can judge it to perfection, then the attacking side, you know, should be able to spot the way through it. It's an overlap situation. And just to set, set the man up to take man and ball. I'm uh, sorry, I, I just think it's a disappointing facet of, of, of Welsh rugby this season that we're falling into all the defensive traps. And it's just, defences are so much on top, whereas everybody else elsewhere is looking at ways to break down systematic defences. Yeah, and I think that, yeah, you know, one of the things is, is, is continuity in holding the ball and not giving the ball away. And both sides have turned it over too much in, in the first half to get that pace and get that urgency into their game. And that's what both coaches will be saying now. Let's hold up, get in the right position. Let's put, you know, front of the let's put Bryant over the game line, hit the rucks, and then Jenkins can start spraying these passes. But at the moment, it's not happening for either side. Is this Scrum 5 Live on a Friday night at the Brewery Field? Plenty of rugby across the weekend. Scrum 5 is on Sunday. And there is no way on earth can you improve your aerobic conditioning or improve your strength without without hurting yourself. It's it's intense work, which is painful, um, and it's something which players won't look forward to. I would be ashamed to sit, frankly, uh, 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 on on the governing bodies committee. Uh, they have been uh, left behind in, in the world of professional sport. They don't figure in the same room as the competition of, of, of in Britain, be it the English, the Irish, or the Scottish. But we can change that. Sunday, 6.05, BBC Two Wales, plenty to talk about. Will the events of the brewery fields tonight make anything worth discussing on Sunday evening? Well, we've also seen this season that the second halves do pick up. Let's hope so. Again tonight, let's rejoin Jonathan <laughs> and Gareth. I tell you what, Jonathan's going to be worse. You're picking man of the match as well. Oh, no. That's again, I thought I got into that. I'd give it a haul in studio. But I just think, you know, they've got to put pace in, as Mike was saying, putting pace into the game and being patient. You know, they are kicking on the fifth or sixth phase where I've just got to hold it, suck somebody in, and then there's an overlap. And also, just look at what's happening out out wide either side of them and who's in front of them rather than just watching you know the, the space that they're playing in so a lot of improvement uh, to do but um, you know I think there's a lot of quality on the park and who knows a bit of intensity and uh, the, the, the victory at the moment at this part of the season is vitally important for both sides and maybe that's why they are a little bit edgy Ian Ramage tells Neil Jenkins he can get the second half underway, and darkness has long since fallen bridge end. Let's hope the game lightens up in the second period. The game very heavily defensively orientated for the first 40, and neither defence being broken down as far as tries were concerned. Once again, we see the first chapter of the second half being a kick downfield and the kick to touch. Leighton Samuel will be happy with the way the bank has been populated this evening. A few Bob in the coffers after that. Yeah, very good throw. Nice to see you. Again, Siroli gets in on Bridgen's throw. He's had a big, big game in the line-out. Has Robert Siroli up for days. After winning the ball initially, reacting to something that happened afterwards, the penalty already gone to the gem. And the linesman's on. Here we go. The spot is something. Get back. Just wait there, please, with your two players. Just get a hold of your two players. Get a hold of them and just hold on to them. I don't know what caused it. After the event, 
Really by 25. Yeah. To okay. put him in the face. Okay. Right. Okay. Number five. Come here, Stavaz. You please. All right. We don't need it. We had something right at the start of the first half. I don't want it now anymore anymore. Okay. It's sorted and settled down first half. Let's make sure it start, goes yeah. that way this half. It's good. Same penalty. Holding on. There you go. There's uh, De Bruyne again. There's not much going on there, is there? Look at that. Maybe the push. That was the penalty was for from the linesman. Yeah, he walked in saying he didn't really know what started it. I think it was Robert Ciroli who finished it. Up in Scotland. Kick-off for 7.30, Borders against Cardiff. And at the moment it's Borders 3, Cardiff 3. Cardiff needing a win from that one. Then, looking for a way through the Ponty defence. Uh, Thomas ball, hanging on to possession. Cut, ball, turn over. And the ball not reaching the ground. And so Ponty 3 will have to put in at the scrum. Yeah, good defence again. Back rows there. Kelly and Parks both go in, just held him up. Dummy runners everywhere. Dummies bang. Look at that. Three the back row. Granlow's got him up. Kelly's gone for the ball. Turned him over. Good play back row. Bonafreeze. Right, Davey had to come across to the open side to the further touchline. And it's just a meter inside. And in fact, he went out. So it was a good kick from Brett Davian indeed. The breeze. Picked up slightly then, and it is in front of Pree's favour in the second half, but it's certainly not the kind of I massive breeze we see sometimes. I think it's uh, front of Pree's throwing, so Warlow must have taken the, the, the ball into, into over the touchline. That's the centre. No, it's not at the back. It's the back. Thank you. Parks raised. Ball on that one. Pontefi's line-out has gone well, they got got 100% on their own throws. Oh, but a bad ball again, though. Well, reclaimed by Sidori, but again, Baber being played under pressure. And that will disappoint Pontefi, they did the hard work, then made it really, really difficult for the scrum half. Jenkins now has to come in as a temporary nine. And Brett Davy that a little bit closer. Davy with the up and under, John Bryan is chasing. He and Gareth Thomas are there, it evades them both, and Mevin Davis plucks it out of the air. Faber, Jenkins, Parker, trying to shuffle his way past Gareth Thomas. But again, the ball held up just slightly for Pondepreve, Kelly. David James with a tackle on him, so was Gareth Thomas. Lewis, Davey, Gethin Jenkins, the numbers are here, now then, can they work some space? But it's Sidoli who's on the wing and Parks looking for him to come back inside. Mevin okay, Davis again there, advantage. he's covering a lot of ground as the Pontefreed captain. Still on advantage. Geraint Lewis in midfield, straight through Jenkins on his elbow. Andy Three, Moore with an important yes, tackle. Yes. And again, Baber has to really dig for it. Pontefreed are desperate for quick ball. The They'll have a Three penalty advantage. if they can't get the ball back. And that's just what they have in the end. Yeah, good play by Pontefreed. Good ball retention, good patience. And quickly. then, you know, Lewis with a, with a thrust on the middle. Lovely offload to Jenkins. Good play. That was much better by Pontepri. Just what they needed. Get a big man in midfield and support alongside him. Here we go. Nothing on. You know, Mannix didn't want to know there. The Bridgen the number 10. Didn't want to know. Got behind the advantage line. And again, he's the one who flops over the top and gives the three points away. is just upping the tempo and changing the point of attack and uh, Lynn Howell's there who's in communication with the rest of the management team will know that they have to think of something different because that defence is so hard to break down Neil Jenkins Simplest of kicks for him, third success. And Ponte Breathe go ahead for the second time. This time by nine points to six. Zilvati saw as well. I think uh, 
Hij zei me nog wat doen. Hier is de de breedlak. Man next didn't want it. Gets over the advantage. Lovely offload. And look at Man next struck him back. Here he goes. Just flops over the top. That's a penalty. Three points easy for Neil Jenkins. A little bit of indecision there in Conti ranks. They let it go over them and it bounced over the, the touchline. And Conti previous line out will be in their own 22. It's a safe take by Dale McIntosh, but the referee wasn't happy with the Gens alignment. Same end result. Can't he try and work it forward and do so? And Bell has lost the boot. Can't the breathe, keep it in field and keep it moving. And that's the important thing. Once it becomes static, they have to use it. Gareth Baber lifts it up into the night sky. Wyatt right down on Craig Wallow. Matt James then in support, and the Gen needed it as well. Wallow back up on his feet quickly to supply Gareth Thomas with a pass. Lovely work from David James. Took a good angle as well inside him. Martens, Mannix was meant to go downfield. Straight into the waiting hands of Brett Davy. He replies with interest. Craig Wallow looks for open field and goes back towards the near touchline. And there's some space there as well. Ryan to the tackle. So is Parker, but who does that leave in Potter Freed's midfield? Doesn't matter, because it's not coming out of there. Potter Freed have a penalty. On your feet, please. Again, it's Marnix kicking away loosely. That was a good kick by Davey, puts a, you know, water under pressure. And again, the penalty's gone for, for Ponte Freed. Penalty is mounting against the gen. Ponte Free take the game to them and up the tempo. Yeah, with the winds, you know, picking up slightly in Ponte Free's favour. Here he goes, bang. Knows he can get outside of Davy. Steps inside, but De Brian is there, good tackle. And look, he's turned him in a tackle, that's great strength. They're all coming from the wrong side. Yeah, there's a couple there, really. Take your pick, not releasing. People flopping over the top, not staying on their feet. To be not even from the end of back feet. Wind slightly in Pontefree's favour. Marks again, the line out target. Nevin Davis with a feed of John Bryant on the straight flat run. Good quick ball this time. Bell into and through midfield. Bell still going, managing his way over towards the try line. But it comes to Jenkins. Parker, and he's lost the ball in contact as a tackle comes in from Warlow. And again, great build-up by Ponte Freed, but they couldn't nail it. Nick Tremendous Kelly. run by Duncan Bell, giving Ponte Freed a fine attacking option, but they couldn't finish it off. Great run from depth, you know, just popped on his shoulder, hit the hole. Great pace in that, you know, good play, good rough. They did have numbers on the right hand side. But unfortunately the pass went the wrong man, the superb cover tackle. Here we go, watch this. Hooker, Bryant, goes to the floor, bang. This is quick ball, look how quick that is. Duncan Bell, missed tackle by Sheila Martin, and he's away. Hits the floor, and then from this rough, I thought it was a try. Neil Jenkins, bang, he pops it to Kelly there, the number six. And it's straight there upon the piece. Unfortunately, the wrong ball by Neil on that occasion. Missed opportunity. Look at this. Bang, he's in the hole. Gareth Thomas would have had to make a great tackle to stop him there. Superb run offered by Nick Kelly. Ponte Preeth miss out on it that time, but they are certainly the ones who are in charge at the moment. Mevin Davis takes the pass from McIntosh. Hands in the way of Gareth Faber, but play on, says the referee. Faber looking absolutely flummoxed. Couldn't understand how a Pugen player had got there to impede him. But it's given the Den the chance to get away from that defensive position. Thomas and James again combined. And the 
the referee is playing a lot of advantage. He says it's, there's not a free ball going on there. And if there is, then is anybody allowed to go for it? You know, Gareth Faber, you know, the moves for that decision, but he said the player come over the top of the ruck. On that occasion, the penalty was given because the player hadn't got on his feet. He was on his feet. No, he didn't. Over the, straight over the top of it. No, it's straight over the top. Just throw over. And you know you're actually the passing and he caught your hand up. Here we go. And there's the tackle. David James again goes to ground. It's a ball is loose, ball is loose. See? Ball is free. He's on his feet there. Nick Kelly is on his feet. And the guy on the ground, difficult to say who he was, didn't get up. Jenkins missed with his first attempt back in the Ponte field shirt. But everyone since then has been straight and true. That's the angle that faces Jenkins. 41 metres the distance. Absolutely perfect. And the reward for 12 minutes where they've taken the game to the gym for Ponte field. There's a second, second half penalty for Neil Jenkins. Yeah, Ponte have certainly increased the, the pace of the game. Also, the, you know, the, the pace of the recycling, the hitting works a lot quicker, sharper ball then between 9 and 10, and uh, you know, they, they're dominating the game. Well, scrum half and hooker called for it, but Faber got there first and got the pass in to Geraint Lewis and Richard Parks in support of the number eight, Jenkins. And finding touch as well. So Pontefreve doing the basics, trying to cut out the errors. Yeah, just doing enough there, Gareth. You know, they um, you know, nearly scored outside with a Nick Kelly run. But, you know, they're just getting down the position and looking for the penalties. And at the moment, that'll do them because Progen aren't really winning possession, they need to win possession and get back into the game. The flick back from Budget, good pass from Martens, Mara Thomas, Mara James had gone on the drift, they tried to use Jamie Ringer coming back on the angle as a decoy, but again, penalised on the floor, and defence is fine. As long as you don't give away penalties, but if you do, and you've got Neil Jenkins against you, then the game is in danger of slowly drifting away from you. Yep, I think Parks, you know, he's just winning the, the back row battle, he's getting there before anyone, and he's the one who's, uh, you know, is winning these penalties for Pontefield. Well, the game suits him now, Jonathan, doesn't it? The static game is no good for, a, for an open side like him, but this, with a quicker ball, getting across field suits Richard Parks much better. Well, what's happening is he's just getting there before uh, the Bajen support play and the guy on the floor is isolated and he's holding on to the ball. What happens? You know, the penalty goes to Ponapreeth. There he is. And that's George Smith. Neil Jenkins. Back in the groove, kicking wise. And there's another one. It looks pretty good. No doubt at all. From the second, it left his boot. And that puts on the breathe. Two scores clear for the first time in the game. Yeah, just stumbling for Jen at the moment. They've got to try and get possession, keep the ball. His point is kicking a touch. You know, as Manich has been doing now, they've got to keep ball and try and move it about and, and wait them with the opportunity. The boot of Neil Jenkins stretching Pocket Breeze lead here at the Brewery Field. The boot of Yestin Harris doing the same for Cardiff up in Scotland. At half time, it's Borders 3, Cardiff 9. Thanks to the penalties of Yestin Harris. And in the other game being played this evening, it's Edinburgh 8, Munster 6. And Leinster 6, Connaught 10. Late this does. They're kicking off later than this one. Oh, Eddie's tips are going all right. Yeah. Except for Cardiff. And the beer's on Eddie tonight. Oh, you get no chance. <laughs> <laughs> the 
another fine line now take and again Mevin Davis is doing such a lot of hard work there but Gareth Williams well, he came in from the side to the referee I think he'll find himself or feel himself a little bit unlucky yeah it'll be interesting to see this the Bajens support uh, then they admit to the referee but the other decisions have been right look there he goes drive hits the floor bounce a great clear out and he, he does come in from the side but you know are there a, is there a ruck form that's the question was there a ruck form there and he was thinking will i go back will i go back oh, oh, there's the ball let's go for it and the tail of two hookers that time going in favor of the pontypris skipper mevin davis Once again, uh, five minutes. Jinx has turned this game. You know, this goal kicker, not only Jinx, but the back row, the forwards. You know, they've created the opportunities for the, for the penalties, and uh, Jinx has just nailed them all. And there's a smile just playing on Lynn Howells' lips there. And he must be thinking, that's my boy. John Bryant follows up that kick and Bryant is there, brilliant work, oh, Parks couldn't gather it, there's a bit of knee, there's a bit of hand in there, and Bridgend looking to see if they can get anything from the scraps, but they'll settle for a scrum at the moment, because such is Pontypris dominance, Bryant great again. Yeah, good follow up, good play by the centre, tries to offload, and there we are, just knocks on, but they're just hunting in packs aren't they, they're a lot quicker, the Pontefield forward. Get your square, get your shoulder up and square. Oh, All the highlights ball. from the weekend's Start game. Scrum five. Sunday, 6.05. Here we go. You know, up on the right hand side. That's it, you know, they knew what they were doing. Referee said use it, didn't use it, lost possession. Uh, John Teal on the far side of the Bridge End Scrum was just called into action his first game of the season. That's because Chris Horsman, well his wife has gone into labour today, so he was a late one. A late change in the Bridge End lineup. So we're approaching the hour mark, and now 12 points separating them. Geraint Lewis trying to get over that game line. Managed to get the ball to the ground, and managed to get Pontypris another set scrum. Yeah, big 10 minutes coming up for Pobogen. Got to get their hands on the ball. Dominating the game. Want to the supporters give voice as Baber goes for a break again. Referee slightly in his way, and Nathan Budget away this time. Wyatt tries to smuggle it back. And again, want to breathe. Nothing's on. Well, they're keeping possession, and that's the big thing. Yeah, that's all they have to do, isn't it? You know, they're just in control of the game, keep possession field position as well, confidence in their defence. It's not pretty, pretty to watch, but it's pretty effective from Pontypridd. Bryant, Davy coming back across, Ringer with a tackle on him. Lovely pick up by Neil Jenkins, off the deck, had to react quickly. Wallow back there. Side of the boot, Brett Davy has given Lewis outside him. Puts in the angled kick, and Pontypridd is playing percentage rugby at the moment. Nothing more, but it'll do. 
the Dijen, they're chasing this game. Yep, 12 points in front. Forwards are going well. The kicking game has certainly improved because of, uh, you know, better possession. And I think they're looking quite confident now because they don't think that the Gen have got anything to offer at the moment because they're not winning any possession. That's the Bajen captain, Gareth Thomas, who has to come up with a few answers. Gareth Williams finding Daniel Jones. And he's brought down to earth illegally. He's engaged on it as well. Pulling down. Penalty. Three engaged on it. Well, ball goes up, Daniel Jones takes it, six, and he's the one who's pulling it down. It's the Kelly dragging Daniel Jones down. Jen want to bring on a couple of replacements. And Sean Van Rensburg and Chris Loder coming on, and while the touch judge grabs the referee's attention, we can go back to Stewart. Thanks, Carl. Well, Dennis, uh, when Neil Jenkins is in the opposition, good defence is important, so is discipline. Yeah, uh, discipline is, mo is most important with Neil. You know, he's uh, missed one, is it just the one early on when he called out a sight there? It is a bit of a wind and he's punishing them. And uh, at the moment, Ponapriza are putting a different kind of pressure on them as they were at the first half. They're attacking the 10 hole a lot more and it's, they've changed their kicking game and it's working better for them. Would you expect a yellow card given all the infringements at the breakdown? Uh, once or twice, I think they've been lucky, uh, particularly with the halfback trying to get the ball away. So he's been a little bit tough and a quick tap where they tried to go. You know, as far as the referee sees it on the day, it wouldn't have been uh, unheard of for it to be given there. But uh, they've got away there, so they'll be quite happy. Thanks, Dennis. Robert Sidoli's fourth line out steal against the throw gave. Can't deprive that position, but it's gone as the ball spilt out of Geraint Lewis's hands. Sean Van Rensburg, well, he did exactly the same. And here comes Gethin Jenkins. There are numbers left for Pontypridd. Simple passing should do it, but the pass was forward. Well, that was a clear-cut chance, and a chance thrown away by Pontypridd. That could have been good night for Jen, because from the turnover by Rensburg, Kevin Jenkins goes down and just there were so many men outside and the, and the pass was forward. Well, I didn't really have to draw the man. Any kind of pass would have done. There's such an overlap there. And Pontypridd will be kicking themselves for that. Mannix. Gareth Thomas. You have to lead by example. Bryant. You know this. Great tackle with the help from McIntosh. Here's the opportunity. Watch watch the, the Bridget player outside. He comes rushing in. John Teal. Look, comes rushing in, maybe panics getting a little bit. But look at that. What an overlap. Sonny Parker was under the sticks. Look, bang, straightens up. Sonny Parker on the angle. Well, under the post, saw the pass out wide. Oh, that's a good pass to put Musto in some space. Musto at pace, but well brought down by Sonny Parker. Matt James, good flick to Van Rensburg to Gareth Thomas. And now Pontypridd have to defend for the first time in this second half. He managed to slow it down, but it's back for Bridgen. Ringer drives in. Back it comes, and Bridgen have a penalty, as again Ponte tries to slow it down. In the air, 13. And Sonny Parker has been called across. Is it just a warning or is it a yellow card? Both sides. Preventing quick ball. Leave it alone. You are on the deck. You knew you were on the deck. I'm thinking yellow cards. And that's a lucky break for Sonny Parker. He said with he said he's thinking yellow cards. You should have thought of it. That was 20 minutes ago. It's a time for producing rather than thinking. But Pontypridd, well, lucky after the golden opportunity. Lovely inside ball. Had to come in the angle there, David James. 
but they're slowing the ball down exceptionally well. Look, I can't see it. It's very difficult again. It's Nick Kelly, isn't it? And he's just slowing everything down. I think that's Steve Fenwick there in the back down there. With a the blonde hair. With a pint of lager in his hand. <laughs> I've seen him every time. <laughs> Yeah, the former favourite down here as a player. I pretend to need these points. And they've got them, thanks to Craig Warlow. The first time they've really been down in front of the half in the second half. And Craig Warlow just about keeps them in touch. Yeah, they needed that, but they need a bit more. But they've got to get back into this game very, very quickly. Good to see the youngsters coming in here at the brewery field. See the crowd here as well. Big crowd it is. A lot of Pot the support, and they'll be happier with what is it? A dozen minutes plus to go. Wallow, who's got all of Bridgen's points safely away. I think they need more than uh, penalties now. There's another legend, GPR. I think a bit concerned because uh, you know, the backs against the wall again. Marks gets a hand on it, but it bobbles back the other way. Van Rensburg, who certainly got a presence, and Bridgen need him as a ball carrier. Yeah, they need a open the game up a little bit now, break it open, you know, go midfield, shorten the line out, just do anything to to move the Pontefree defensive line around because, you know, they're looking very solid. You've got to make things happen differently. Neil McIntosh with a safe take at the front. And he's kept on going there, as Neil McIntosh. Oh, there's a complete mix-up. Mevin Davis again is back there to rescue them. How often has he done that this evening? Faber to the blind side. Takes the hit. Parks in there. Should be Ponty Ball. It is. The man down hurt. Jenkins. Chip over the top. Bryant again following up superbly. He hunts every single ball. Never gives one for dead. Pick up by Gethin Jenkins. If they go left. Now then, they could have one on here. Geraint Lewis, Davey, that's the pass that was needed, but it was slightly behind Richard Parks, so he had to check, and that's given Bridgen's defence the chance to recover. The Pont de Prix still have their hands on the ball. Jenkins, Duncan Bell, ploughing forward once again. There's the ball. McIntosh has a look. So does Geraint Lewis. Jenkins, again, confusion behind. Kelly with a pick-up. They need forwards in their clearing, and they've got them. Geraint Lewis goes for the little grubber kick. Jenkins with a follow-up. The referee says he was taken out after the kick. Had he let it go, it was an interesting one. Race between Neil Jenkins and Gareth Williams. Well, at 18-9 up, they won't be too bothered with that decision because Jinx will just pop another three points over. But look at this, a lovely kick. Watch, sucks him in, bang. He is taken out slightly late, offside, but if you just leave it on there, you know, it was a foot race between Jinx and the hooker. But Gareth Williams isn't that slow, so maybe Neil Jenkins is happy the whistle went. <laughs> well, the way his arms were spread afterwards, he was confident he was going to get there. Oh dear, that is a nasty cut on the head of Gareth Faber. Yeah, sometimes those head wounds uh, look a, a lot worse than what they are, so... Robert Sidoli was also down, getting his arm bandaged. Yeah, a couple of stitches. Neil Jenkins. Easy again. And that is all seven to Neil Jenkins. And again, opening up a 12-point gap. 21-9 in Pontefree's favour. Yeah, I think Paul John is... Uh, Oh, John has come on now, so, uh, you know, a couple of stitches, I don't think he'll come back on, there's no need to come back on, experienced player, Paul John. 
the old partnership back in tandem John and Jenkins for the remaining eight minutes plus injury time great pass by Mervyn Davis getting Nick Kelly running forward getting an extra few meters taking in a few more bridge end tacklers Paul John is caught in there somewhere now he's back up on his feet oh, terrible pass from Sidoli but Geraint Lewis is the one who benefits from it he's got Brett Davy in support there goes Davy from halfway Waller is there the only defender Parks Parks for the try line and the try has come at long long last and it's been scored by Richard Parks and it is see Pont de Prive home and dry superb support play who was on the on the outside Parks and Gethin Jenkins, you know, and just, just, again from a stick, loose pass, and how many times do you see a try score from a loose pass? Here we go, look, it's a loose pass, and that's when the defence relax. They relax, and there's the damage. Gerard Lewis goes through good support play by the full back. Give and take, superb pass again, and Parks doesn't need the support. Goes down early and slides over. Superb try. Geraint Lewis certainly made most of that awkward bobbling ball. Looked inside. Davey was there. He wasn't going to get there from halfway. Sensibly looked for support. Gareth, Lewis, Gareth Williams went for the interception. Richard Parks went for the slide and slid home. He's put over. Seven penalties, not so with a conversion, but it doesn't look as though it's needed anyway. No, I think, you know, when it's on, when you need it, Jinx, just concentrate. Maybe just uh, lack of concentration. But look at that, how often you see a try scored from a loose pass. Defence is unorganised. Good play by Geraint Lewis, good support play, Davy. Williams went for the interception, missed it. Richard Parks, great back row play. Pontefried came down here, first game of last season, and everybody expected Bridgen to win with their new players in tow, but they spoiled the party on that occasion, and they look like doing so again. Neil Jenkins cool under pressure. Sean Van Rensburg, who's up there to bring him down. Jen now 17 points adrift as Mannix tries to make half a break. Very slow again. It's Anthony Carter, the replacement has just come on, the youngster. Gareth Williams doing well and keeping it alive to Van Rensburg. Now Bridgen gets some momentum going forward. Martens from close range. He's knocked on by McIntosh from the tackle. The referee says he went forward from Martens. That's a tough call on Bridgen. And at the moment, they need every break they can. Yeah, I think the, the Pontefield pack have just taken the honours tonight, and that has been the difference. They've been a yard quicker. They've got to break down a little bit quicker. And that has been the difference. The, the confidence has grown. Discipline has gone from Bridgen because of frustration, and all of a sudden, you know, Jinx has stepped up and kicked the goals. And this has just been on the icing on the cake. Loose pass, Gerard Lewis breaks through. Good support play by Davy and Parks, and uh, you know, it's a very, very, you know, well worked try. Five minutes remaining, and Gareth Baber wants to see the end of it. Paul John. Good job, D. I'll let you. the arms. Not Anthony Carter. And the number 21 player could play either full back or wing. Gareth Thomas. David James, but they've been kept quiet this evening. And that one it. went both ways, but it's Bridgen who have the put in. Yeah, they just haven't asked enough questions, have they? Up, oh, got a favour is coming back. Box here. Uh, that shows the keenness. 
Paul John, of course, the main starter in Pontefreeth Colours. So when the opportunity arises, now the favour wants to take it. Oh, lovely inside feed and oh, I was about to say great hands. It was, it was in fact by Anthony Carter, but the ball had gone slightly forward before reaching him. Yeah, I thought Sergio Martins on the outside of, of Kelly, number six. But look at this. This shows a lot of determination. Just gets his bootlaces. He just drifted forward as it came back up off the deck. Lovely fingertip take by Carter. Good take. Jenkins just sits back. The ball was touched in flight, so it'll be a punky throw if it crosses that touchline. has a confidence and that's well worked by the young fullback David James in support as well ducks under Sidoli Mannix Wallow Gareth Thomas and again the Gen find great difficulty in getting out to their own territory and Pontefree Keeping a strand to hold on this game. Dale McIntosh, only two minutes before the end of the match, makes way for Michael Owen. Does that count as a game now for Michael Owen? 20 games this year. Does that count as a game? Two minutes? It certainly does. Two minutes plus injury time. He's come on as a, as a full time replacement. So I can't play more than 20 games. Only got 19 games, right? 70 games left. There's been a chance for some leeway. That was David James who was upended. In fact, it was spiked dangerously by John Bryan, says the referee. And the ball was on the floor for Craig Wallow. Not 10. Another bridge end penalty while they get up there, Jonathan. You've had the tough decision of picking a man of the match from this lot. Your decision. Well, I think it's got to come from the point of field side. And uh, he was either me six, seven, or eight. And Kelly, Lewis, and Parks have been absolutely superb. They've been a difference tonight, but uh, I think because of the try and all the, the penalties that have, he's made for Pontefield, the man of the match goes to number seven, Richard Parks. Uh, for the second week running, Richard Parks has been man of the match. He got it last Saturday against his old club, Newport, and he's got it this time against Bridgen. Richard Parks has got the only try of the game as well. And down there. There was the only try of the match. Rounded off by Richard Parks. Great, you know, he didn't. He knew he didn't have the pace to go outside of uh, David Jean. He just slid early. The evening dew did the rest for him. The tackle to bring down Carter, but it's still live. It was Wyatt's tackle, but the gender there in support. And Ponty get hands on it, slow it down again. Maybe it's too late for a yellow card now. Van Rensburg and Martens look for a way through. David James tries to cut back inside. He'd love a try against his old club. And that's the pot of try line. And only a couple of metres to go. Can they breach it? One, two, and Martens can't get the three onto it. Pot of up too quickly. Wants the skipper called across, but the skipper is the last one on the deck. I think, you know, with all the penalties and all the infringements, it's got to start the yellow card early on in the game because, you know, it is slowing the game down. And maybe, you know, that, is, that has a big effect on the quality of the game because of you know the stop start of it it's got to be quick and if anyone's infringing he's got to go he's got and that's the way we get a quicker game in wales and rensburg martens jenkins with a tackle parks with a support martens hanging on to that ball the gen looking for some crumbs of comfort in injury time 
but it's an interception by John Bryant but he's lost it as a tackle comes in Middlejen may have another shot at it Grant Lewis right up on Sean Van Rensburg referee's playing a long long advantage Middlejen have lost themselves 40 metres John Teal he's lasted the course to Jamie Ringer and Rensburg tries to get hands on it Michael Owen is in there Legal interference from Michael Owen. Tap and go from John Teal. Dying moments of the game now. It's only Cambridge End get a try not, and even the try won't do them for a bonus point. Parks with a tackle. Slow, slow ball. And that'll do. And Bridgen's winning run can't be stretched to three. Comfortable win in the end for Pontypridd. Yeah, very comfortable. They came down. They did a job. They did it effectively, especially in the second half when they picked the tempo up. That man, you know, he won a lot of penalties and Jinx kicked them. And a stretch of six minutes, you know, they kicked four penalty goals and effectively the game was over. So not the highest quality game, but a job well done by Pontypridd. It was indeed their captain, Mervyn Davis will be happy with that performance they dominated the second half after a very very tough first period with nothing to choose between the two teams the Pontypridd stamped their authority in the second half they got the game's only try and Neil Jenkins well he kicked like a dream in the end and Richard Parks got his name on the score sheet and it's two and one for both of them two wins and a defeat for Bridgend a defeat and now two wins for Pontypridd and that makes things very open indeed in this particular pool of the Celtic League Pool B Jen have got one bonus point no bonus points this evening and just the one try hard hard graft out there for both teams but they're both in with a shout of making the quarterfinals Pontypridd winners by 26 points to 9 we go to pitch side to Stuart Davis yeah, thanks very much, Gareth, and with a happy skipper and a man who had a big influence on the game here. Mervyn, if I can come to you first, a job very well done, if you don't mind me saying. Yeah, it was a very hard game, fair play to Bridgend. Uh, they, they had a two great wins, first of all, but uh, fair play to the three boys. They uh, dug it from start to finish, and it was awesome. It was a good test for you coming down to Bridgend. They've been on a bit of a row, much improved from last season, but you didn't look vulnerable in any place. You looked very comfortable out there. Oh, you've got to be very patient, you know. We know it's going to be a very hard game. It was a battle up front, first of all, and fair play the backs, they just came alive to play, so it was awesome. You've got some pack coming together, eh? Uh, it's building, you know, a long way to go, you know, but uh, keep on building. Now, let me come to the man on your right, on my left, Jinx. It's like nothing's ever changed, mate. Uh, you know, the points machine again, win for Ponty, just like the good old days. Uh, yeah, and still for the boys, you know, we put a lot of hard work in in the summer, and they made me feel welcome when I come back. And I'm glad to get a start and I tell he's a fantastic player. And I think he let me have a night tonight. So uh, I thank very much to the boys and thanks to the team effort. It's fantastic. You had some great carriers outside you, but you're also up against a Bridgen back line that's very dangerous. And it was tight in defence both ways, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't think there was many gaps out there, was there? We knew that. We knew Bridgen were very well organised in defence and a very good attack as well. Uh, we stuck with it. We're lucky to get a try at the end. But, um, you know, it was a very tight game and we were lucky to take our chances when they come. Yes. It was a hard game. I don't think it's as hard as doing this interview and amongst all this on the touchline, Jake. But let me, let me ask you about the, uh, the the Ponty side you've come back to compared to the one you left. I mean, exciting times. Oh, most definitely. I was lucky enough to be part of the side of the 90s, you know, a fantastic side, fantastic spirit. And uh, exactly the same now. You know, nothing changed. Fantastic side again, fantastic spirit, fantastic support. Uh, what more can I say? It's just yeah. brilliant to pull the shirt on again. All right, good to see you back there, kicking Thanks the goals. Thanks for joining Thanks us, guys. Neil Jenkins, 21 points, 7 penalties, as if nothing had ever changed. <coughs> Might seem here at Bridgend, the first home defeat for the Ravens this season. It means that they 